Good evening. And we at St. Basil's Parish regard the love of God to be the foundation of all life and ministry. We believe in the ever-present love of God as witnessed through Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. We believe that each person is loved by God and is of sacred worth. Therefore, through God's grace, we welcome all persons to our parish. We express God's hospitality by creating a safe, healing, accessible, and transforming place for all to enter. Further, we acknowledge and with gratitude and respect that we gather here on the unceded and unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin Nation, whose presence here reaches back to time immemorial. We honor their long history of welcoming many nations to this beautiful territory, and we uphold and uplift the voice and values of our host nation. In addition to your own personal intentions, please remember Mass intention for the repose of the souls of Don and Mary Smith on the anniversary of their deaths requested by their loving children. Our presider today is Father Darrell Winkler. Please stand. Come on, Christians all rejoice and sing. We've gathered this, this afternoon in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We come together as brothers and sisters in the Lord. Let us be mindful of our need for God's mercy and forgiveness in our lives. Lord, with you as our shepherd, there is nothing we shall want. Lord, have mercy. Lord, even if we should walk in the valley of darkness, we will fear no evil because you are with us. Christ, have mercy. And Lord, in your own house, we will dwell forever and ever. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And now let us join Christians around the world in giving God glory. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you Great glory, Lord God heaven. 
Did I get everybody? Yes. Because when I was in Mexico, I had to do it twice because not everybody got sprinkled. They don't feel they get the blessing if they don't feel the water. So I want to make sure you, you feel the blessing. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost has come, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when the people heard this, they were caught to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom in the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed with his message were baptized, and that the day were added about 3,000 souls. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house I shall dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd. There is no A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, 
leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. With you, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. I think that I can say that many of you may remember a TV show. It's very old. It used to be called Gunsmoke. I don't know if you remember Gunsmoke, but when I was a child, grade two, grade three, I rushed home and I couldn't wait until Gunsmoke came on on Monday nights. And I loved watching uh, Matt Dillon, the shepherd, the um, Sheriff and Doc, remember Doc? And uh, Festus and Miss Kitty, she ran the, the saloon. And it was, a, you know, it was a series about the Old West, Dodge City. And often there was a, uh, about cowboys and Indians and things like that. 
And as a child, I just, I loved the program. I don't even know now. Probably I'd be bored if I watched it today, but then, in those days, something about, you know, the t childhood imagination, and I just loved watching Gunsmoke. In one episode, there was, they were all on a train, Festus and Doc and Miss Kitty and Sh Sheriff Matt Dillon, they were all on the train. I don't know where they were going, but you know, it was the steam train. You know, chuka 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 chuka, and it was that big train. And what happened was these wild Indians cut down a big tree and they blocked the train track so it had to stop. And then those same Indians put a tree log behind and the train was stuck between these two logs on the track and they began to use their bows and arrows and it was going through and people were hiding and screaming in the train. And in this episode, one person gets an arrow in his chest. And on this trip, there was a fake preacher he was fake and he did it as a scam. He raised money, but he wasn't really a preacher. He was fake. So when this man gets shot by the arrow, he said, preacher, preacher, come here. I need your help. And the preacher goes, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. I'm not really a preacher. And he comes forward and he said, all I want you to do for me is to read the 23rd Psalm. That's the Psalm we had tonight. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He comforts me, he leads me, he guides me, he assures me of his love and protection and peace. And that's all the man wanted to do as he was leaving this earthly world. He wanted to hear those words of comfort and assurance. And so the fake preacher was able to do that much for this man. And this idea of the shepherd, this is what we celebrate this weekend is the good shepherd. The idea that Jesus is the good shepherd. And he has been depicted as a shepherd from the earliest days of our Christian faith. There are, there's a painting, probably one of the earliest depictions of Jesus is in the catacombs in Rome. And there is him and he's on his shoulder, his shoulders are as a lamb, a sheep. And so they depicted him as the shepherd. And for some reason, for 2,000 years, we have found this image very comforting to know that Jesus is like a shepherd, that he cares for us, that he uh, protects us, that he guards us from evil, from hardship, from pain, from ugliness. And so the first thing I'm thinking about is this notion of how much he gives us assurance because so often we need it. You know, um, we need to be assured throughout our lives there are miniature crises that we go through, problems that we experience in our lives, and sometimes we just want to be told it's going to be all right. It's going to be just fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. That's the kind of assurance that we need. You know, think about the pandemic for three years. It's going to be all right. Although there was lots of problems. But in the end, we, and we're all right today, right? Uh, not without some money difficulties, but we're still here. And we know that the Lord is still with us. The second thing I'm thinking about and from today's gospel is this idea is that the, the sheep listen to his voice. They listen. And this has been one of the major themes of Pope Francis in these past 10 years, is learning how to listen to one another. Because as you know, the Pope has said, if we continue, all of us, humanity, continue in the present trajectory that we're headed, we're going to go straight to hell. Because we're not treating each, other's, each other as brothers and sisters. We're doing the opposite. And look at the news in Sudan, how brutally violent it is and Syria, and Afghanistan, Ukraine. Is there no end to all the places in the world where we see people who experience danger and fear? The th an interesting thing in that newsletter, if you go to the back, there is a newsletter on our most recent refugee family. I don't know if you've seen it. 
that on the very first paragraph it says, we asked the family, what, what is the first thing you noticed when you came to Canada? Was it the snow? Was it how polite we are as Canadians? What did you notice? And the father of the family said, I noticed that it was safe. Imagine living in a world where all you want to be is safe. So that's what we want to, and that reminds us on Good Shepherd Sunday is that we want this kind of assurance that every, no matter what we have done, we can do some brutal things to one another. We can act really despicable to one another, it's true. And sometimes we're not a good sheep, sometimes we're a black sheep. But we can turn into good sheep. That's what the Good Shepherd wants for us, is for us to, to what? Have an abundant life. That's what the last verse says today. I came so that they may have life abundantly, not just surviving, not living a life of fear. We're supposed to enjoy the beauty that is creation and one another in community. The idea of listening, I'm going to come back to that and then I'll close, is that Pope says that if we are able to listen, he said, that's what the synod is about. You know, we're in the midst of a synod, a global synod in our church, and the synod is on synodality. What does it mean to be in a synod? And he's saying what it means is we're listening to each other. How hard it is to listen. I've been in meetings. I'd go to a lot of meetings. And how often people want to interrupt. How often they interject. They get a great idea. Oh yeah, what about this? Or what about that? Or they, or they may be the opposite. Oh, that's not going to happen. That's not going to work. So all kinds of interjections without listening to what someone is saying. It's a, we have a hard time listening to each other. We have a hard time just listening because we want to speak we want to say things. We want to share our opinion. And the Pope says, that's yeah, good, but listen too. Because when you listen to the other oh, with an open mind and an open heart, things change. When I listen to you and your hopes and your dreams for this world and you listen to mine, things change. Goodness happens. Conversion is possible and life abundant can be ours. So this is a Good Shepherd Sunday where we remember Jesus the Shepherd who wants us to experience assurance, peace, life abundant, goodness, but so often we prevent it ourselves. So let us think of ways that I can be a source of abundant life to others how I can help this world to be a better sheepfold, a better place to live, a better church, a better community, a better society. Having listened to God's word, let us now profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he arose, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Christ the Good Shepherd provides for his sheep, leading and guiding us along the right path with trust we bring our prayers and petitions before the Good Shepherd. For all of God's people, that we reflect on God's call to follow as true disciples with heart, mind, and voice as we journey together, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, that he continue to model servant leadership as the Good Shepherd 
and for all those who hold positions of authority in the church. We pray for him as he visits the people of Hungary this weekend. We pray, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all on International Workers' Day this week, that we recognize and defend the dignity of working people, encourage all to be responsible in their work, and ce celebrate the role that human work has in God's plan for creation, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those at St. Basil's and those in our diocese who will celebrate the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist during these 50 days of Easter, that they be supported by our prayers and example, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Sudan and all countries at war at this time, that true and lasting peace may come through our prayers and their dialogue, showing mutual respect and understanding, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the climate change crisis, may God help us to turn away from the selfish consumption of fossil fuels and to see the impacts of our choices on the poor and vulnerable, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our par parish who are in need of healing and our prayers, we pray especially for Christopher McCaffrey, Duane Domenko, Pippa Beck, Dennis Mueller, John Dorner, Teresa Hall, Tom Charlebois, Amanda Manette, Kevin Sloan, and for all who minister to them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, remembering especially Gerald Troche, Bob Lothian, Donna Marie Smith, Royal McSorley, those who have died in Ukraine, those who have died from the coronavirus, and for those who mourn them, we pray. God of everlasting goodness, by the care of your Son, we have come to know the fullness of life. Receive our prayers that we might draw others into your sheepfold. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ the Good Shepherd, shepherd your people into the ways of your righteousness. Feeding the hungry, welcoming strangers, the least among us, your presence, Lord. As we partake of this bread of life, as we receive this cup, make your church a sign. Shepherd, shepherd your people into the ways of your righteousness, feeding the hungry, welcoming strangers, the least among us, your presence, Lord. Shepherd who seeks of the least.
shepherd your people into the ways of your righteousness, feeding the hungry, welcoming strangers, the least among us, your presence, Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the one who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and to be glorified, O God, you who love the human race and you who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to make holy these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until Or, Holy Father, as we celebrate 
the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, and Marcel, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ, and let us remember especially Bob Lothian and Don and Marie Smith, Royal, Royal McSorley and Gerald Trottier, who was, Gerald Trottier is the artist of these stations that we see around the church. Remember them and all those who have died in Christ. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we too may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. And there, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Basil and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray together now the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and sin, from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Oh, uh -huh. 
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Let us be seated just for a couple of announcements. The Catholic Women's League and the Knights of Columbus Roundtable are hosting a spaghetti dinner to welcome the El Musa family to St. Basil's Church. This will be held after the 5 p.m. Mass next Saturday, May 6th. It is a free will offering evening. All proceeds will be donated directly to the Refugee Fund. Come and enjoy some wonderful fellowship with a great meal. For logistical purposes, if you are planning to attend, please take a ticket from the poster in the narthex. <coughs> Former pastor Father Bosco Wong will be making a short visit to Ottawa in the near future, and we, ha we have invited him to a coffee party in the parish hall after the 10 a.m. Mass on Sunday, May 14th. Please come and share some time with Father Wong and other parishioners in the church. Hall after the 10 a.m. Mass. We hope you can join us. 
Coffee Sunday volunteers are needed and much appreciated. Please continue to sign up for the month of May. The sign-up poster is on the western window of the narthex. Don't forget to pick up this little newsletter on your way out. There's a bunch of them in the narthex, and it's a kind of introduction to our most recent refugee, uh, to the refugee family which we sponsor. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist has ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus the Savior.